Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and if you've been on my channel before and you've watched some of my videos you'll recognize these containers. These containers as well as this bin right down here are containers that are holding what I consider to be finished castings and I'm not exactly sure I'm guessing that these are somewhere in the neighborhood of five gallons each so I've got something in the neighborhood of almost maybe you know 12 or 14 gallons uh, assuming that this is not quite five gallons but let's say it is if it is then I've got something in the neighborhood of 15 gallons worth of finished compost here finished castings from my worms and some of this stuff, if you remember, if you've been around for a while watching my videos, you'll know that some of this stuff's been sitting in storage for some time now. And I went to my spreadsheet and I uh, ran some of the numbers just to get a sense of, you know, m mostly to get a reality check of, you know, what am, I, what am I doing here and how are things holding up to time. I, uh, I wanted to know just how long it's been since I harvested this material originally. And, uh, and in each case, I've had an initial harvest from the composting bins, and then I've allowed the material to go through a cycle of just sitting and sort of resting in a finishing stage um, to allow the material to maybe dry out in certain cases, like which was the case in this most recent harvest. This stuff came out of the composting bins, very damp, and I, I initially put it into this bin to allow it time to evaporate a little bit and dry off. And in other cases, the material might have come out of the composting bins um, just fine, but I just put it into these uh, containers for storage. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, going back to the oldest of my containers, which is this one, I've got some notes over here, so I'm just going to read off of a piece of paper down here. This container um, holds castings that date back at this point ten and a half months since they came out of uh, the composting bin. In other words, they were harvested and separated from the worms that were doing the work. And there may have been a little period of time, and in the, this case, there were 37 days given um, to allow the material to either dry out or maybe go through a period of baiting. And by baiting, I mean the material might have been um, thought to have a lot of residual worms remaining in it despite the the harvesting and separation process there might have still been worms remaining in here so I've gone through different um, types of baiting uh, using different types of containers attempting to in each case draw the worms out of the finished material into a place where they can be extracted from the harvested um, or finished compost so that really I can treat this as uh, a final harvest, a final package of finished compost with ideally little or no worms in it. And most recently this container here is um, not in a bucket yet as you can see it's still in a bin and it's still in that sort of finishing stage as I refer to it as sometimes. And this container has been in, in this stage, again I'm glancing down at my notes here. Um, I might as well just grab them here. It's been um, 57 days now since this material has been in here and uh, if you go back a few weeks, a couple months, you'll see that I've gone through a few different cycles of uh, attempting to bait worms out of this material as well. And during the last attempt we went into my little box that I have in here that I refer to as my bait box and we basically didn't find any worms. Well, we found a few worms, but those worms were actually there from the previous baiting attempt. And I had actually left those three worms in there. It was either three or four worms. And they were the same three or four worms that we found last time. So despite the fact that we didn't seem to have any additional worms being drawn to the bait box in here, I, I did extract the worms during that last attempt, which was at this point 10 days ago. And, uh, and at that time I put a little pole up into the corner of my uh, video, so up in the corner you can sometimes see a little thing pop up, and in that case it was a pole that I had created asking the viewers if they thought that it was time to abandon this baiting attempt and you know put the, put the castings away, or if I should continue attempting to bait the worms. 
And between the poll and some of the comments, I believe that the consensus was um, maybe three or four to one, you know, abandon the baiting attempt. It looks like the worms, any worms that may have been still in the material have in fact uh, exited and have been rounded up and extracted from the material. So it's safe to say that the, the compost is in fact worm free. So um, I'm, I'm about to break down this container now. I'm going to give a quick glimpse into what's happening, if anything, in that bait box that's in here. And uh, if there are any worms that did get attracted to that last go around of baiting, I'll release them into one of my active bins over on the shelf. And then we'll just go ahead and we're going to move these uh, castings into a bucket. Uh, I don't have one of these square buckets. I've got a, a simple round bucket, which I'm going to put my castings into. And then at that point, I'm going to have a pretty good collection of castings here for my, uh, for my spring planting and for my seed germination attempts coming up in the future. Uh, I might even be able to gift some of this uh, casting material, some of this vermicompost to some of my gardening friends. Um, but after we've gone ahead and we've cleared out this finishing tub, um, and place the castings into the, the bucket that I have for it. We're also going to take a peek inside of these older buckets too to see how this casting material is coming along. And um, I did actually poke my nose into these after my last feeding of my bins. I had a couple bananas that I had set aside, banana peels that I had set aside, and I had rested those banana peels at the top of each of these containers underneath the paper that's covering up the material. Um, just to see if maybe by chance there's still maybe some worms hanging out in these containers and if there are then we'll go ahead and we'll extract them as well although I'm not expecting to see much but we'll see what we see but um, let's begin with this container over here take a look at how the bait baiting attempt turned out and um, and then go ahead and empty the tub into the bucket that I have standing by yeah, so let's get to work where's my glove Okay, so like we've done in the past, I've got this little plastic container that we're going to dump the bait box into, just so we can get a sense of how successful the baiting attempt was, if at all. And, um, and that'll also help us better keep track of the, the worms that we rounded up so that we don't lose track of them and that we could return them to a, an active compost bin. So this is the the bait box that I made reference to earlier. It's um, it's just this piece of plastic. It, uh, it has these slots in it, fairly large slots that allow for the worms to pass through and make their way into the container. Um, before we mess with that, I'm just going to poke around a little bit down here around the hole, just because even if there's no worms within the bait box, there's always that possibility that the the lure did work and that there were worms attracted nearby and they just never made it all the way in. And maybe they're just hanging out somewhere in the vicinity of the box or immediately below it. But like we saw last time, that is not the case on this go around. So I don't see any worms down there. Um, let's, let's dump out the contents of this to see what we see. I'm going to use this stick to help the material slide out. And it's pretty gooey and nasty. I don't remember what types of foods we tried luring with. I know in the past I've used melon and uh, other types of food items. I believe on this most recent go around it might have been some sort of a vegetable matter. But I really don't recall at this point what it was. So we have a little bit of bedding, some newspaper that was laid down, or some sort of scrap paper that was shredded and placed underneath the feeding area. Um, the vegetable matter is pretty gooey, but I, I guess you know one of the telltales if there's worms feeding in your area is the presence of castings. So, you know, little black droppings, little black uh, worm um, droppings. But 
I don't see any signs of that here. And I don't see any signs of worms either. Sometimes I just wonder if I, you know, let it sit for a moment, will I be able to observe something moving amongst the stillness? And I don't. <laughs> um, sometimes I also wonder if what I'm seeing is a worm, but I recognize right away that it's not. In this case, what we have here is a millipede. So there are other creatures still hanging out down here within the bin, um, just not worms. In this case, it's a millipede. Um, a helper, a helper as far as I'm concerned. So not a, um, a centipede, for example, would be something that I don't consider a helper. They actually prey on um, worms, baby worms and worm eggs. So if it was a centipede that I noticed, it would be much faster <laughs> moving. Um, but I would also be attempting to squash it and eliminate it. So I don't see any worms and I'm not going to go nuts looking for them either. At this point I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to place this material into one of my vacative worm bins where I think it'll be appreciated um, and it'll be broken down quickly I'm certain. But at this point I'm going to consider this as a done deal and I believe it's time to take these castings out of the bin and place them into my storage bucket. So the bucket we're going to be using is just your basic five gallon bucket and I'm going to rest it here on the edge of the container and um, maybe towards the end I'll simply pour off what remains but in the beginning here I'm going to use my hands to to do the shoveling over and, um, and I'm just going to take a quick peek at how the material actually looks down below. Like I said this material was pulled out of the original uh, composting bins and was found to be extremely moist and damp and muddy and at this point I think it's actually gotten to a really nice consistency. Um, I mean, you know, if I had to, you know, really give it a, a critical analysis, then there are a fair number of fairly large um, uncomposted chunks of matter in here. So I don't think it would win any prizes at the uh, county fair, <laughs> so to speak, in terms of the most beautiful compost. But um, other than that, as far as moisture is concerned and its consistency, um, not counting the the large chunks of residual matter, um, I believe it is fairly nice stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and just start scooping this stuff over here. And while I'm doing so, I'm just keeping an eye out, see if I might, by chance, spot a worm. But it seems to me like the chance of that happening is fairly slim. I'm definitely not holding my breath. Well, I believe we're pretty much at the limit of this uh, at this bucket for the most part. Maybe when I stand it up it'll settle a little bit and leave enough room for these last few handfuls. But I believe the way to get this last little bit in is just going to be to pour it over. So uh, let me go ahead and do it that way. Yeah. Shaking it around a little bit seemed to help it settle down into the bucket better. And I think we've got enough room to pour out what remains. Okay, so we're almost at the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to craft a, a piece of newspaper to rest on top here as well as a piece of cardboard and hopefully that'll be enough to keep the moisture down within the container. Because the one thing you definitely don't want to do is seal a container like this shut. Um, because then it just starts to become really funky and uh, it can pretty much spoil a good batch of vermicompost. So, 
All right, that's a done deal. Let's move on to check out the older containers to see how things look in those. Okay, so now this leads us to the newer of these two green containers, which has, um, like I said, has been set up with a banana peel. And looks like we've got some takers on the banana peel, but once again, we're dealing with uh, millipedes. I see one, two, three, four, five millipedes hanging out here. Maybe more. Five, six, seven. And who knows how many more elsewhere. But I don't see any signs of worms hanging out here. At least not yet. Okay. So once again, I'm just going to use that little white tray to hold the uh, banana peel off on the side. Although it may not make much sense to return the banana peel to service because I believe if there were still worms cruising around in here then we probably would have seen them by now. And here again you can look at my compost and you could probably immediately criticize it for not being perfect. It's got sticks, seeds, a whole bunch of other little bits and pieces in it that are um, not vermicompost. And here on the surface you might even say that it's a bit dry and it is, but uh, the other day when I went ahead and I put that banana peel in here, I did probe down into it. I went down a little bit deeper just to get a sense of how the material looked down lower. And you could feel it, you know, you could feel the coolness of the moisture down below. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's damp, per se. In fact, I would almost say that it is a little bit drier than what m might be considered as a, an ideal habitat for worms because worms might consider this to be a little bit dry. But um, but for storage purposes of vermicompost, I believe it's pretty good. It's not dried out. It's got moisture content for sure still. Um, and you can see the material flakes apart into individual little casting bits. So, um, so the material is holding up good to, for the sake of storage. You know, there's no there's no funny odors or anything coming out of it. It just has a very neutral, earthy compost smell to it. So I believe that the way it's been stored is uh, is working well, even though it's been some time now. Like I said, it's been uh, you know close to seven and a half months since the last time this material was really being worked on by a bin full of worms. And, um, and over time, worms were baited out of it and eventually it was set aside for um, storage, just put into storage. But by, um, you know, just by covering it up, and I guess, you know, I usually use one of these as an indicator that there's food below, so I don't think we're going to need that any longer. Um, but, you know, maybe just for the purposes of moisture retention, an extra layer can't hurt. So I'll just leave it there. There's no harm in leaving it. But like I said, I've been keeping it covered. It seems to me like a good way to keep it stored um, without it getting um, potentially anaerobic or, you know, not being able to ventilate and keep aerated. 132 days since it's been in this bucket in storage and seems to be holding up pretty good. Let's see how the, uh, the older of the two buckets is holding up. Okay, so that leads us to this older of the two storage buckets and this bucket is now yeah it's getting up there in age that's for sure 10 months 10 and a half months since it was um since it was originally composting with worms and i guess 221 days since it's been sitting here in this bucket whatever amount of time that equates to and here too, I'm just peeking around underneath where the banana was. So I, I had done the same deal with both of these storage buckets. Was I placed um, I placed a banana peel in here to see if it might attract any worms. And here too, again, this is not a this is not award-winning compost. It's full of all kinds of debris and stuff. So uh, you can see I've been attempting to. Um, test different harvesting methods that don't involve sifting and screening but the uh, the downside to that is if you if you've got material that's not entirely broken down already 
then it will be um, littered with little bits of uncomposted material <laughs> as you can see here so it's uh, once again not perfect castings material but good enough for me I suppose here too with these huge chunks of uh, eggshell I don't know what I was thinking normally I would break eggshell up quite small before placing it into my bins so I'm not quite sure how I ended up with chunks of eggshell this big I mean more recently I've been using machine to grind up the eggshells and pulverize it into a really fine bro broken up material but even before that I was using sort of a mortar and pestle to break stuff up and um, it was definitely finer than what you're seeing in here and then at some point in the next few months in the springtime I'll be using this stuff for my for my garden outside so uh, that's it for today everyone hopefully you've enjoyed this little uh, check-in on my stored compost and uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad I had a chance to do this too because I've been wondering how things are doing in these containers and I'm happy to see that things are doing just fine and there's nothing to worry about and it also gives me peace of mind that uh, it should everything should be just fine in here for a couple more months until it's time to set the garden up again outside in the springtime at which point all this material will finally get put to good use so all right everyone that's it for today well, hopefully you enjoyed the video uh if you did then you know like always please remember to give me a thumbs up i really appreciate that uh, every like really helps my channel and please also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel if you're interested in this sort of stuff there's always new videos coming out and if you're a subscriber and you ring the bell then um then you'll be notified of new content coming online so once again thanks for watching and thanks for keeping me company have a great day. Bye now.